they don't choose to live with it. To some, they don't realize they even have it. From 2009 to 2013, 17,310 people in Pennsylvania alone have died from Alzheimer's disease. According to the Alzheimer's Foundation of America, Alzheimer's can be defined as, quote, a progressive degenerative disorder that attacks the brain's nerve cells or neurons, resulting in loss of memory, thinking, and language skills, and behavioral changes. They don't have a choice. I'm James Bailey with WSYC News, and this is part one of my series, Living with Alzheimer's. Hello and welcome everyone to the WSYC News Podcast. I'm your host, James Bailey, and today we start part one of my series, Living with Alzheimer's. In part one, we spoke with Robin Bailey, an administrator for the Philadelphia Society of Clinical Psychologists. While she holds the title of administrator, she also holds the title of caregiver. In 2015, Robin moved in with her mother-in-law, Joe Ann Bailey, who suffers from a rare form of leukemia, as well as Alzheimer's. The first time we had any clue is I was driving with her I was in the passenger seat, and she made a left on red. This was just the start, as Robin and her family began to notice a trend of her failing memory and lack of her usual personality. We would talk about a program or something she would watch on TV, and she'd be seeing it at our house, and she'd say, that was already on. And it was like a live baseball game. The changes started to be made. First off, they had to get her off of the road. Not only was she starting to put herself in danger, but others around her. She was driving a two-ton vehicle with her 60 years worth of common knowledge in driving that was starting to slowly slip away. Robin didn't know how to go about getting her off of the road. Luckily, she didn't have to. Joanne was already losing some of her vision at the time, so the doctor did the job for them. And he was outstanding. He's the one that took the bullet. We weren't the ones that have to say, sorry, you can't do it. It was really like, doctor said you can't. And that didn't go over well. The signs began to pour in on Joanne's struggles. In summer 2012, Robin and her family decided to move Joanne into Springhouse Estates, a retirement home in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania. Knowing Joanne's personality, there was no way that she was going to be able to move into an assisted living area. Assisted living includes nurses and employees who help the residents go about their day-to-day lives. Robin's family knew she wasn't going to like it there. There were some decisions that had to be made. The key was, how do we get her into Springhouse, and do we tell Springhouse she has signs of Alzheimer's, or do we not? If she, we tell them, then will they let her in? And if they won't let her in, then does she come live with us? Is right. that something we can tackle? So that was really huge for us, because... We didn't know what direction to go in. While Joanne lived in independent living in Springhouse Estates for three years, Robin and her family always kept an eye on her. In April of 2015, Joanne was diagnosed with leukemia. Robin responded and realized that this was going to be more difficult for Joanne to be living alone in her current condition. She decided to move in with her, to take care of her, and started to notice what Joanne was going through in her day-to-day life. She was always a social person, but the Alzheimer's changed her personality, and she couldn't be as social as she used to be. Even something as simple as formulating sentences became extremely difficult. I would reassure her, take your time, I'll be here when you figure out the words. And sometimes their thoughts would get together, and sometimes she would just give up. Um, But at its worst, um, it was... Side effects came about and started to take effect. Joanne was becoming paranoid about her surroundings, and things became even scarier for Robin and all those involved. She told me that the man was in her apartment, the people were coming into her apartment, but the man was in her apartment listening to her and recording her. We're trying to convince her otherwise, till we realized we had to play it differently. Joanne has continued to regress, and her condition has done the same. 
She's been moved into assisted living, and Robin has moved out and is back home. Her and her family still visit every week. Robin went on with saying that if she had the opportunity, she would research the comparison between Alzheimer's and a person's personality. In terms of Joanne, she claims she got the wrong side of her personality. I think she moved into more of her fears and paranoia. We move from the victims at home to the professionals. In part two of Living with Alzheimer's, I had the opportunity to sit down with Dr. Dara Barassa, an associate professor in social work and the director of the gerontology minor at Shippensburg University of Pennsylvania. If you weren't sure what gerontology was before, Dr. Barassa has you covered. It's the study of older adults, and it's an interdisciplinary study, so it really taps into a majority of the majors that we have here on campus, but also out in the real world, too. Older adults will be, are, if they haven't, haven't already have, they are touching everybody's lives. Dr. Barassa didn't hold back when it came to explaining how gerontology was an interdisciplinary focus. There's a lot of different types of areas that study older adults. So economics, what older adults and how they're going to fare in the future, how they're faring now. Health, we've got doctors and nurses and physician assistants and therapists and uh, occupational physical therapists. That is a whole side of gerontology. It's, it's a whole, that's a whole big field. Um, studying the impact of aging on the con- on a country. That can be for demographers. <laughs> demographers do that. Um, we as social workers, that's, for, that's my training, we learn how to help older adults and their families. And so we learn different skills and how to do that. Psychology would tap into gerontology because they are looking at the different mental health issues that affect older adults, dementia, maybe depression. If they've had a mental health issue their entire life, how that's going to impact them growing older. Mm -hmm. Sociology is the study of people, so the experience of an older adult in in this country. Business, uh, financial planning, uh, I mean, financial planning can start from when you just get out of school so you can make sure that you have enough money that you want to retire on and live comfortably into the future. Counseling. I mean, it's endless. How does someone develop Alzheimer's? Well, Dr. Barassa, along with many researchers, aren't entirely sure. There's a lot of different research studies out, and basically what they're saying is is no one really truly knows 100% why it happens or what are the risk factors. But in gerontology, I teach that living in a urban location may put someone at risk of being of developing Alzheimer's. We don't know. Maybe there's a there's another theory I read about with some kind of chemical in the air or something like that may lead to development of Alzheimer's. According to the Pennsylvania census results, a mass amount of the population within Pennsylvania is Caucasian, and that influences a huge part in the statistics of Alzheimer's within the state. Because of this, Caucasians hold the majority of the statistics concerning Alzheimer's in PA. But, according to the Alzheimer's Association, minorities are up to two times more likely to get the disease. The issue? Trust. People of minority status, African Americans, um, Hispanics, they actually don't get diagnosed with Alzheimer's dementia until much later than Caucasians do. There's a fear of the healthcare system among minority populations, especially African Americans and Hispanics. African Americans, there's a long history of mistrust within our healthcare system. So they try not to go, and, and they maybe feel that they are not being heard, both African Americans and Hispanics. So they actually have a higher incidence of Alzheimer's, but doesn't get diagnosed. If interested, Dr. Barassa says that getting involved in the gerontology minor at Shippensburg University is pretty easy. They come to me. All they have to do is I'm on the web page. If they want to look up gerontology, they can email me. They can call me. I'm usually emailing me if they want to set up an appointment. Coming to my, my office, I'm shipping 325, so I'm pretty available. You can contact Dr. Barassa at dpbarassa at ship.edu. I want to thank Robin Bailey and Dr. Dara Barassa for their time speaking with me on their stories and knowledge on Alzheimer's. Thank you all for tuning into my Living with Alzheimer's special. Be sure to follow me on Twitter at Jim S. Bailey for your up-to-date WSYC news. Until next time, I'm James Bailey.